All right, so I'm gonna be walking y'all through the April side quest and how it's gonna work, how the rewards are gonna work, and how the whole quest is gonna work, and maybe give you all some tips or you know tricks as to how to better deal with some of the encounters in there. So the quest is actually pretty similar to some of the other side quests we've had uh, in the past couple of months. So basically you log in, an objective is going to be unlocked every day. You complete the objective, it's, I assume it's gonna be, you know, really just doing some fights in the arena and the EQ, just different different areas of the game. You complete the objective, you claim the key from it, and that key would open you the quest, the, the Contest of Realms quest. You run the path, uh, as many paths as you want, basically. It's just, I'm gonna get to the quest overlay itself and that will be pretty self-explanatory. And then you will get the rewards, and then you can just repeat that that process. I think they've done a pretty good job explaining the the whole quest idea so far. And uh, just to just to reiterate, you don't have to run all the solo objectives every single day. So you can just wait and let them accumulate, and actually run them all at the same time, maybe in big chunks and that would give you multiple keys, then you can go through the quest multiple times in the same day, so you don't have to worry about them every day, which is always really nice and something that it, they, they've been doing and they've been a lot better about. This is how the key looks. It's a pretty pretty funny looking key. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's, that's how the key looks and we're gonna be getting into how the actual quest will work. The quest will have no energy cost it will have a total of seven paths and it's gonna be your choice to do each path or not. So you can basically do all seven paths. So gotta keep that in mind. And uh, the rewards are gonna be randomized. The fights are gonna be randomized. The nodes are not gonna be randomized. So you should probably come in prepared especially since you can only bring in three characters. I have gone through the list of the nodes, mainly for the legendary difficulty, and based on what I see, the most challenging nodes are probably gonna be the Mix Master on Spider-Man characters, or the, uh, the Micro Reflect on Storm, Cyclops, or, or Wolverine. The, the X-Men characters also have Powerful from afar, which is a pretty, pretty challenging note. So come and prepare it with, I, I would recommend maybe a higher damage output character, uh, maybe somebody who's tanky, and maybe some power control, just, just in case. So that would be my recommendation for the pass. They don't look too challenging. So let's go take a look at the pass and actually see how this looks. So as far as the pass are concerned, you can see down here that you're starting on this tile and the whole quest is going to be circular so you're going to go around and you go all the way around and come back down to the final boss which is the silver centurion and also if you all notice there's a there's a new autoplay button there it looks pretty snazzy we'll see what happens with that but yeah that's fun stuff so on each crossroads you can either choose to fight the boss and like for example in this case i can choose to fight captain america infinity war get the 300 uh, six star shards and i can choose to fight i think it's joe fix it here get the other 300 six star shards or i can choose to skip some of the fights so like for example if i you know i'm crazy and don't care about i don't know gold i can just not fight gold pool and that's fine that is perfectly fine, but you know you can just get to pick and choose however many paths you want to do, and the rewards on them are going to be random. Let's get to the rewards. They're all the way down at the bottom. There's a whole list of nodes, the possible list of nodes on the defenders, on the bosses, and they actually got they actually get more difficult because they add more nodes as the as the level of difficulty goes up. We also have your day-to-day -day section here. Again, it's really considerate of them, man. This is pretty cool stuff. And this is the rewards. I'm not going to be covering the heroic masters or epic rewards. Uh, I do think the legendary is going to be, uh, you know, the best in terms of the rewards. But 
you know, they all kind of scale down quite significantly as you go down the difficulties. And as far as the rewards, we got different amounts of different, uh, different type of reward, and each of them will have a different drop rate. So for example, T5 basic catalyst fragments, 2000 of them are gonna have a 3% drop rate. Now, what does this mean? So every time this quest opens, there's gonna be seven reward slots. This quest is gonna be opening for 28 days. So you multiply 28 times seven, I can't do that in my head, but I have done it in Excel. So let's see how much total rewards we're gonna be expecting from this event. The total rewards will also include the pretty juicy uh, solo objectives. The solo objectives come from actually completing the quest. So you can get into the quest, kill the enemies on the lanes, and just not bother with a boss, and still get the rewards from the lanes, but you won't get these rewards. So uh, the solo objectives are like win 50 fights um, in heroic or greater, 75 fights in masters or greater, 100 fights in epic or more, you know, they all kind of go up from there. And there's also legendary uh, objectives that give uh, T5 CC fragments. So they give a total of five 2% crystals and also one 10% T5 CC fragment crystal. So a total of 20% from the solo objectives of this month. I assume that also means that there's not going to be a solo objective related to the cavy queue this month. So let's break down the rewards, see what the expected values are gonna be at the end of the month. So for T5B, and also this would assume a, an even distribution and a, uh, you know, a complete, uh, you know, a total completion of the pass. So, you know, you're not skipping any rewards if you want this total amount. You can choose to skip them, but you know, this assumes that you're not skipping them. So for T5B, you're gonna be getting around half of one. For T1A frag fragments, you're gonna be getting, I have no idea how, many, how much T1A this is. I think it's like five, but I could be wrong. For five star six, you're gonna be getting uh, around 12. Uh, this is not six signature stone crystals, it's just actual signature stones, generics. For six star shards, you're gonna be getting 5,300-ish. For T4B, uh, you're gonna be getting uh, around four, again, approximately. T4 CC, between four to five. Five star six crystals, you're gonna be getting a total of 25. T2A, you're gonna clock in at a, a little bit less than two T2A. Five star shards is gonna be around 13,700 and 1.47 million gold. This already accounts for the T5B that comes from the solo objectives, but from the solo objectives, you will also additionally get one legendary crystal, one featured five star, uh, and also one five star awakening gem crystal. So overall, pretty rewarding event. As far as the, the nodes are concerned, and also the fights on the pass, it doesn't look too difficult. We're gonna see how hard it's gonna be, how time consuming it's gonna be, most importantly, but yeah, it doesn't look too, too bad uh, for, for a side quest, especially since, you know, even if you don't have access to all your top champions at all times during the month, you can just save this and do them all in one chunk. Anyways, let me know if you got any questions about the event. Let me know if I got anything wrong. I hope not. And yeah, I'll catch you later. Bye.